I'm Christine Keeney. I'm the Northern New England manager for the East Coast Greenway Alliance. I'll be talking about three major developments in the Northern New England and Eastern Massachusetts region. Lots has happened on the Greenway in the last year, um, especially uh, as we emerge from the pandemic and people are still getting outside and um, biking and walking. Um, and we have more federal funding than ever, so we're really excited about um, all the developments that are happening to help complete the Greenway. And I'm going to talk about some of them in Northern New England today, uh, starting with Maine. And one of the major developments is um, East Coast Greenway Alliance, along with many of our partners that are shown at the bottom of the screen, including the Maine Trails Coalition, uh, Bicycle Coalition of Maine, Casco Bay Trail Alliance, and others. Um, developed the main active transportation arterials plan that will allow all of Maine's 25 largest municipalities to be connected by active transportation. And this is a really big deal because uh, it really outlines a plan for the whole state um, and how we can realistically achieve this goal uh, if we all work together um, and we focus on um, investing in these projects that will create a connected network. And it's been getting a lot of great uh, endorsements and attention. And when we released this plan to the public, um, it was picked up by some uh, media outlets, including Maine Public, um, and they uh, shared this a story about connecting Maine's 25 um, biggest communi communities by 2030. Um, so there's been a lot of really great support for this and we continue to work um, as well with Maine Trails Coalition to get the word out about this vision um, and how we can um, collaborate and work together to achieve it. And so we think this is a really great vision and a really great uh, point that we can all um, work together on um, in the coming years to make a reality um, with partners like Maine DOT, um, the governor's office, um, and other um, state agencies. Also in Maine, um, one of the really exciting developments is uh, East Coast Greenway Alliance uh, worked very closely with the Eastern Trail Alliance, um, as well with Representative Pingree's office to um, obtain a $700,000 earmark with a uh, just over $200,000 match for 11 miles of design for the Eastern Trail from Kennebunk south to North Berwick. Um, so this is a really substantial section. Um, you can see the orange line is the 11 miles that are going to be designed as part of this project and will um, allow us to um, route people off of the on-road route, which is shown here in blue. So it's going to be cutting off a substantial amount of road um, and helping to complete the East Coast Greenway and the Eastern Trail in Southern Maine, um, which is part of the Blaze the Trail South campaign um, to continue the Eastern Trail South. So that's really exciting. Um, and we had a press conference with Representative Pingree, um, as well as the Eastern Trail Alliance, um, announcing this federal funding, um, which was well attended. Um, and everyone's really excited to move this forward. Um, and the design um, should be going out to bid um, before the end of the year, um, as well as the um, highly anticipated Close the Gap project um, to connect the Eastern Trail um, between South Portland and Scarborough. Um, we're hoping it'll that'll go out to bid by the end of the year as well, and hopefully construction will start next year. So there's a lot of really great developments um, happening in Maine overall, but um, specifically things are really moving forward um, with the Eastern Trail, and we continue to work with our partners, um, especially at the federal level, to uh, obtain the funding to keep the momentum going for um, other sections as well as um, obtaining uh, funding for the construction. So moving south to developments in New Hampshire, the New Hampshire Seacoast Greenway is the almost the entire uh, section of the envisioned East Coast Greenway in New Hampshire. Um, and as you can see um, on this slide, um, it's broken up into several phases. Uh, the first phase is phase 1A, um, which is um, Portsmouth to Northampton, um, which is about eight miles. Right now it is in design and permitting. Um, actually, just last night, uh, there was a public meeting um, put on by New Hampshire DOT. Um, and that, that project is moving forward to construction um, in the next few years. So we're hopeful by 
by 2023, 2024, uh, that that eight mile section will be constructed. Uh, phase 1B um, was originally supposed to be part of phase one, um, but it had to be broken out um, because there are some additional drainage challenges, um, which makes it um, more challenging from a design perspective as well as more costly. And so New Hampshire DOT broke it out as a separate um, piece um, so that phase 1A, the eight miles could move forward on um, a, a more normal construction timeline and not have phase 1B hold it up as these drainage issues um, are dealt with. So, but still hopeful that that section will also be going to construction in 2024. So we will um, certainly be um, watching for that. Phase two and phase three um, further south um, in Hampton and in Seabrook um, are, are further out. Um, you can see 2020, uh, 2030 and 2032 are when those are anticipated um, to be constructed. Um, how, and it's definitely further out than we would like to see, um, but we also are working with our partners at the Rockingham Planning Commission, as well as our um, congressional partners. And we, I would really like to see those moved up um, and in order to do that, you know, we'll have to work towards finding some funding that might be outside of the typical um, New Hampshire uh, 10 year plan for um, transportation projects. So all these things are in progress um, and we're going to see a lot of um, we're going to see a lot of developments in New Hampshire um, in the coming years. Um, also, there's work being done that we're participating in um, to identify trailhead access points. Um, you can see on this slide that um, there are 23 road crossings um, and they've also been broken up by which ones would um, likely have parking, um, which ones would be walk or bike only. Um, and so that's um, all part of the planning process that's going on right now um, while the design and construction process um, is going on with New Hampshire. DOT. Um, and as part of that process, um, we're working with um, also partners at the National Park Service um, that are providing some technical assistance, um, as well as a, a pro bono group of um, landscape architects and designers um, that are helping the communities to identify parcels, as well as potential designs for trailhead access. So this is just one example um, at Banfield Road um, of what a trailhead access point could look like, um, including parking um, for cars. Cars, um, bike parking, uh, other amenities like bathrooms um, and water fountains and things like that, and then how um, that um, could actually provide the access to the rail trail corridor. Um, so this is um, ongoing work that's happening right now. There was a design charrette um, last week, um, and then there's going to be another one. So um, the public outreach and the design of the trailhead access points and amenities are happening um, right now, which is really exciting to see um, alongside um, the actual um, trail design. And so in addition to what I talked about in terms of trail access, um, the, the landscape architecture design process and outreach is also involving what trailhead kiosks could look like. Um, as well as um, trail signage. Um, and so this is just a very early um, example of what it could look like. And in addition to these trail signage and kiosk concepts, um, the, the logo that you see here at the top of the sign um, is actually something that was also developed during this process to specifically um, brand and represent the New Hampshire Seacoast Greenway alongside the East Coast Greenway. So all of these things are all happening in tandem um, and we're really excited um, about those developments in New Hampshire. And lastly, moving on to exciting developments in uh, Boston, um, the Border to Boston Trail um, is really uh, moving along this really great map um, we've developed along with our partners um, at the Essex National Heritage Area uh, to show the Border to Boston Trail um, in the, the maroon uh, magenta color, as well as um, projects that are in process. Um, you can see here in the orange sections. And we also were able to um, work with our partners as well as Representative Moulton's office to obtain a $1.2 million earmark for planning and design of the existing gaps in the Border to Boston Trail. And this funding is going to go specifically to the 
um, communities of Newbury, Boxford, Peabody, Salem, and Marblehead. Um, so this is going to provide some um, some funding that is going to uh, fill a gap from the planning and design perspective, which will get us set up to then work towards getting the construction funding for these segments. Um, but it also will eventually physically close the gap um, in, in the border to Boston Trail in several of these communities. So um, we're really excited about this. Um, we had a press conference um, only uh, a couple months ago now. Um, this is Representative Moulton, um, and you can see that it was really well attended um, and that we're really excited for this funding to um, be coming from the federal government, going to Mass DOT, and then they're going to um, help get that funding out to the communities, um, which will be working on um, their various sections for um, planning and design. There in Maine specifically, there are a few sections of the Casco Bay Trail um, in Yarmouth and Freeport that are going to be going to construction uh, next year as well. Um, so keep an eye out for that. That's along the Route 1 corridor. And New Hampshire Seacoast Greenway I already talked about, but we're anticipating the construction to start next year. So that's something that we're, we're also excited about for next year. And then lastly, something I didn't mention that I'm really excited about is um, we are working with Mass DOT um, as well as the Cape Cod Commission to sign the, the East Coast Greenway from Bourne on the Cape all the way to Provincetown. And I'm really excited about this project because we had been working with the Cape Cod Commission for going on three years now, actually, to plan for the signing of the East Coast Greenway as well as State Bike Route 1. So we worked with them to actually make sure that the two routes were um, in alignment so that we could it would facilitate the signing in the future. And then we also applied twice to the Mass Trails program to um, fund the, just the, the outreach and the design around the signage project. Um, unfortunately, on those two occasions, the project wasn't funded, um, but actually uh, Mass DOT and Mass Trails decided outside of their grant cycles that this was a really great project that was worth funding um, and they have um, brought on tool design group um, and we've already had a couple meetings and this is actually going to be looked at as a pilot project for the mass dot new wayfinding design guide so we're really excited that um, that they decided that this was a, an important project um, and that we're going to be kind of the guinea pigs to to implement the first um, you know, long distance um, signing of um, a bicycle pedestrian route in Massachusetts um, using their new wayfinding design guide. And not only are they funding um, the planning and the outreach and the design for these signs, um, they're actually going to fund the fabrication and the install. So um, they're really hoping that it's, it's a really tight timeline, but they're hoping to actually have the signs hopefully installed next year, um, which would be amazing for uh, next season um, to really help people um, be able to utilize um, what's a really, really great uh, route. Um, if you haven't ever biked um, the length of Cape Cod, um, definitely check out the East Coast Greenway route there. And hopefully um, in 2023, you'll see all new wayfinding signs. There's plenty of amazing places to check out um, on the East Coast Greenway in Maine, New Hampshire, and Eastern Massachusetts. Um, but I would, my favorite season on the Greenway is the summer. Um, I just did actually a bike tour on Cape Cod um, uh, all the way out to Provincetown with uh, my, our colleague, Allison person so that was really amazing um, and then I would also say um, traveling to down east Maine um, in the summer um, and checking out the Greenway route there um, that's an amazing place to spend some time in the summer especially if it's hotter elsewhere um, usually the weather stays pretty cool down there so you can really enjoy the summer but also not be uh, too hot um, to be out there pedaling. Thank you everyone so much for joining today. Really appreciate your interest in the East Coast Greenway um, and your support for the work that we're doing. Um, looking forward to answering your questions and uh, to seeing you out there in the Greenway.